complicated. How do you do it? As the Quran says, Ta'ala ila kalmitin sawa'in, bainana bainakum. That come to come in terms as between us and you. Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Amongst the Hindu scriptures, the most popular is the Bhagavad Gita. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 20, that all those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires, they worship the demigods. That means materialistic people, they worship demigods, that is things besides one true almighty God. Among the Hindu scriptures, the most sacred are the Vedas. There are basically four Vedas, Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sam Ved, and Atharva Ved. It's mentioned in the Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, Na Tassipati Ma Asti. Of him, there is no image. It's mentioned in the Yajur Ved, chapter number 40, verse number 8, that God is pure and bodiless. It's mentioned in the Yajur Ved, chapter number 40, verse number 9, Andhatma Pavishanti Ya Sambhutiya Mupaste That they think in darkness, those who worship the Asambhuti, that is the natural things like air, water, fire and the verse continues. They think more in darkness, those who worship the Sambhuti, that is the created things like table, chair, idol, etc. The other sacred scriptures are the Upanishads. It's mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1, it says, Ekkam evidityam, there is only one God, not a second one. That means, God is only one, He has got no partners. It's mentioned in the Svetasvatara Upanishad, chapter number 6, verse number 9. It says, Na kafya kafji janita na kadipa which means that of him there is no parents nor Lord. Almighty God has got no parents, no father, no mother. He is not begotten. It's mentioned in the Sveta Svatar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19. It says, Na tasya asti. There is no likeness of him. Amongst all the religious scriptures, the Vedas are the most sacred. And amongst the Vedas, the most sacred are the Rig Veda. In Rig Veda, book number 2, chapter number 1, it gives 33 different attributes to Almighty God. The Holy Quran gives no less than 99 attributes. The Rig Veda gives 33 attributes. One amongst them, which is mentioned in Rig Veda, book number 2, chapter number 1, verse number 3, is Brahma, which means the creator. If you translate into Arabic, it means Khalik. We Muslims have got no objection if someone calls Almighty God as Khalik or creator or Brahma. But if someone says that Brahma is Almighty God with four heads and on each head is a crown and he has got four hands. We Muslims take strong exception to that. And moreover, you are giving an image to Almighty God. You are going against the Ajurved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, which says, Na tasya asti. Of that God, no image can be made. Another beautiful attribute given in the Ved, book number 2, chapter number 1, verse number 3, is Vishnu. Vishnu means the sustainer. If you translate into Arabic, it means Rab. We Muslims have got no objection if someone calls Almighty God as Rab, as sustainer or as Vishnu. But if someone says that Vishnu is Almighty God who has got four hands and on one of his right hands he has the chakra, the discus and in one of his left hands he has the conch and he is travelling on a bird or he is reclining on the bed of snakes, you are giving an image to Almighty God. We Muslims take strong exception to it. 
And moreover, you know, going against the Jurved, chapter number 40, verse number 8, which says that God is bodiless. It's mentioned in Rig Ved, book number 8, chapter number 1, verse number 1. March the Nidhi Sad, that do not worship anyone but him. Praise him alone. The Rig Ved says in book number 6, chapter number 45, verse number 16, Ya ek it mushtihi. There is only one God. Worship Him alone. So if you read the Hindu scriptures, you will understand the concept of God in Hinduism. Let's discuss the concept of God in Sikhism. Though Sikhism is not a major religion, it's an offshoot of Hinduism which was found by Guru Nanak. If you ask any Sikh to describe the concept of God in Sikhism, the best answer they can give you is called the Mool Mantra. The first verse of Guru Granth Sahib, which is there in volume number 1, chapter number 1, verse number 1, Japuji, also called as Mool Mantra. It says that there exists only one God, who is called the True, the Creator, who is free from fear and hunger, who is immortal, not begotten, self-existent, great and compassionate. Sikhism, besides believing in one true God, it is also against idol worship and avatar vada. That means God taking human forms, taking forms of avatar. Let's analyze the concept of God in Zoroastrianism. Though it is a very old religion, which claims to be one of the oldest among the Aryan religions along with Hinduism, it has a very small following of about 130,000 people. And they call Almighty God as Ahura Mazda. Ahura means God. It means Lord or God. And Mazda means wise. So Ahura Mazda means wise God. And the characteristic of this Ahura Mazda, one true God, is given in the sacred scriptures, that's the Satir, that Ahura Mazda, Almighty God, He is one. He has no father or mother, no wife or son. He has no image. You cannot imagine what he is. He has got no form. No eyes can comprehend him. And he is closer to you than yourself. Let's discuss the concept of God in Islam. The best answer that any Muslim can give you regarding the concept of God in Islam is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 and 4, which I started my talk with, which says, Kul huallahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah hu samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yulid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Wa lam kufwan ad. There is nothing like him. This is a four line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given in Surah Ikhlas. It is the touchstone of theology. It is the touchstone of study of God. Why do I call it touchstone? Because if anyone claims to be Almighty God, if that candidate passes the four tests, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as Almighty God. It is the asset test. It says, Kul Allah Say He is Allah one and only. Allah Samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yulid wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufan ahad. There is nothing like Him. Otherwise, the Holy Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 110, it says, Qalidullah Abidur Rahman, Ayyakma Tad'u, Falal Asma Al Hasna, Say call upon him by Allah or by Rahman, by whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful names. You can call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by any name, but to him belongs the beautiful name, and it should not conjure up a mental picture. The Holy Quran gives no less than 99 different attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the crowning one is Allah. And this message that to Allah belongs the most beautiful name, besides mentioning in Surah Isra chapter 17 verse 110, it is also mentioned in Surah Araf chapter number 7 verse 180, in Surah Taha chapter number 20 verse number 8, as well as Surah Al-Hashar chapter 59 verse number 24, that to Allah belongs the most beautiful name. 